In this video, I'm going to show you how complex numbers are related to dot and cross products. And then we are going to use this relation to find the area of any polygon you can imagine. Suppose that we have two vectors A and B and the angle between them is theta. We can draw a line perpendicular to A from the endpoint of the vector B and we have this right triangle. This side of the triangle is the magnitude of B times sine theta and this side of the triangle is the magnitude of B times cosine theta. And also this is the magnitude of the vector A. We can define the dot product of A and B to be A dot B which is magnitude of A times magnitude of B times cosine theta and theta is the angle between A and B. By definition you can see that A dot B is equal to B dot A because we can actually write A dot B as A times B or B times A cosine theta. Now suppose that we have a plane and there are two vectors A and B on this plane and the angle between them is theta. If we draw the same line on this plane, we have another right triangle. This side again is the magnitude of B times sine theta. The cross product of A and B is a vector perpendicular to this plane and it is perpendicular to A and B. It's very important to know that B cross A is minus A cross B and it is in the opposite direction but still perpendicular to A and B. The magnitude of the cross product is the magnitude of A times magnitude of B times sine theta. Now look at this parallelogram that is formed by the vectors A and B. The area of this shape is A and is equal to the magnitude of the cross product. The problem we have here with the cross product is that it lives in a 3D plane but we want to stick to the 2D plane because complex number are in a 2D plane. We don't have any problem with a dot b or the dot product because it's a scalar. But as you can see, the cross product is a vector and it is perpendicular to the 2D plane. In another video, I'm going to talk about wedge products, which is related to the blue area you can see in the picture. And in this framework, you will see that this is a bivector. But for now, we are going to stick to the cross product and also stick to the 2D plane and let's forget about the perpendicular component of the cross product for now. So I redefine the cross product as the magnitude of the two vectors times sine theta. So here A cross B is the magnitude of A times magnitude of B times sine theta and B cross A is the same magnitude with a minus sign. Now let's get to the 2D plane and we have a vector A and another vector B. We can write A and B by their components, A1, A2 and B1, B2, or we can define them by some unit vectors and write them as A1, E1 plus A2, E2 and for B, B1, E1 plus B2, E2. The angle between A and B is theta again, so we can write the dot product of A and B either in the componential form or in the geometric form. Geometrically speaking, if we have a vector that its magnitude is the multiplication of the magnitudes of A and B, and its angle with the x-axis is theta, we can form a right triangle, and this side, the x component, is A, B cosine theta. We can also write the cross product as A1, B2 minus A2, B1, or the magnitude of A times magnitude of B sine theta. And if you look at a right triangle, you can see that this side is AB sine theta. So if you wonder how we calculated the cross product of A and B, we can write them in the componential forms and then do the cross product. These two terms are zero because the sine of theta here is zero. And we can write E2 cross E1 as minus E1 cross E2. So it yields A1 B2 minus A2 B1 and a perpendicular form E1 cross E2. But in this video, uh, we ignore this component because we just want to stick to the 2D plane. So to sum up, this is A dot B and this is A cross B. Now let's get to the complex plane and talk complex numbers. 
We can write A as A1 plus IA2 and B as B1 plus IB2. A can be written in the polar form as the modulus or magnitude of A times e to the power of I alpha and also B can be written as the modulus of B times e to the power of I beta. As you can see in the picture, theta is beta minus alpha and as you can see, we can write the orange number, orange complex number as the modulus of A times modulus of B times e to the power of I theta. And we know that theta is beta minus alpha, so we can write this number as the magnitude of A times e to the power of minus I alpha times magnitude of B times e to the power of I beta, which is A bar B. A bar here is complex conjugate of A, and we can show the complex conjugate on the 2D plane in which the real part is the same, but the angle is negative. So this orange complex number is A bar multiplied by B. When we multiply A bar by B, it rotates it by minus alpha and also rescale it to be the orange complex number you can see on the plane. So as you can see in the picture, we can write the multiplication of two complex numbers as the dot product and the cross product. And we can somehow associate a vector to these complex numbers. Let's find b bar a, which is b dot a plus i b cross a. And as you can see, the real part stays the same, but for the complex part, we have a minus sign. So we can say that b bar a is the complex conjugate of a bar b. Let's add these two complex numbers. These two terms cancel out, and we are left with 2 multiplied by a dot b. So we can say that this is a dot b. We can also subtract these two complex numbers and this time the real parts cancel out and we are left with 2i a cross b. So we can say that a cross b is this number. And also the real part of a bar b is a dot b and the imaginary part is a cross b. So we know that the cross product is the area of the parallelogram that is formed by the two numbers a and b. So we are going to use this fact to find the area of this pentagon. Let's this point be our origin. It's an arbitrary origin. And connect it to these points. We can find the area of this triangle as half of the area of a parallelogram formed by two numbers or two vectors A and B. Pay attention that this is a positive area. We can have a negative area if we write it as half of B cross A, which is minus half of A cross B, and I show it with red color. Now we can find the second area to be half of B cross C, the third one is half of C cross D, the next one is half of D cross E, and the last one is half of E cross A. So by finding the areas of five triangles, we can find the area of our pentagon by using the relationship between the cross product and complex numbers. And as you can see, the cross product is the imaginary part of the complex multiplication. Now let's change our origin and see what happens. We connect the origin to these points, and as you can see, we have five other triangles. We use the imaginary part of the multiplication of complex numbers to find the area of this pentagon. The first triangle is positive because the angle from A to B is counterclockwise. But the second triangle is negative because the angle is clockwise. The next one is positive again, the next one is positive, and the last one is positive again. And as you can see, in this part, blue areas and red areas cancel out and they yield to zero, and we are left with the area of the pentagon. This method can be used for any polygon and we can use it to find the area of any polygon no matter where our origin is.